Hey folks, Dixie T here, back once again. Well, that was a really good pay-per-view for Night of Champions. And, you know, and I have to say, one of the most positive things there, and um, honestly, what the W was missing is the commentary that they brought back G um, JBL. And let me tell you something, the commentary improved immensely. And... Probably does feel a little bad talking about that because what happened on my last Monday um, with Jerry Lawler, what have you, I feel a little bad about saying that because I mean, Jerry Lawler, for good or for bad, I mean, he's not really on point in point commentary. Just, I, I don't want to get flamed, I don't want to get people saying, oh, oh, Dixie, or what have you, is a horrible human being, what have you, uh, and everything. But Let's all be real. I'm not jumping on the JBL bandwagon because honestly, I always like JBL as a commentator. And I, I always respect uh, Jerry Lawler as a commentator. He did great stuff. He always was really good. But, you know, I have to really say this. So I want to clarify all this type of stuff. I don't want to get, you know, I'll probably get some email or regardless or what have you. But honestly, the, you know, Jerry Lawler, um, well, the show would have been a lot worse because he would have been a lot distracted because the show was honestly on point. JBL put put over the guy that's like uh, Antonio Cesaro. He put over Sin Cara. He told history or whatever. It, it reminded me when uh, when uh, uh, Jeremy Borash went on um, does when he did commentary on the. Uh, Destination X and just tell he told a really good story about Bobby Roode and before the matchup uh, about him training on the road when he you know for that TNA when he was TNA champion what have you and I'm like man you know it really felt like that's what it needed you know just they tell personal stories or what have you and um, it, it just makes a lot more sense and it just brings out more you know characteristics on. Um, on the show, and not only the show, but the people wrestling, and um, that's what it's been missing um, from the WWE, and and I hope that Jerry Lawler comes back 100% mentally, uh, physically, or what have you, and you know, I'm not saying he should be like JBL, but you know, keep matches on point, keep it on uh, point, you know, just try to get these guys up over, because WWE doesn't seem to do that themselves. I mean, JBL does that, which, you know, is always a good thing. Anyway, things that really bothered me tonight and Night of Champions one, Dolph Ziggler winning. Uh, not winning. Um, it just seems to me that a Ziggler it was a great match, but. If he's not going to win, what's the point of giving him the uh, money in the bank? And this is the problem with the WWE. They don't really put anyone like, oh, not over, but they don't really uh, say, hey, guy, hey, man, we need to put you over as a check. Like, we need to, you know, push him, you know, for the WWE to push the guy, and say, hey, he's a main eventer, but he keeps losing these main event matches. So that's why people don't really take him that seriously. Another thing is that supposedly, uh, Randy Orton got into it with a fan, and um, and honestly, with him, honestly, Randy Orton shouldn't got into anything. He should have just ignored it and walked away. Because supposedly, is it on the nights? Because he just came back from a drug suspension. I mean, someone like a Randy Orton should not be doing anything else. Personally, it's you know, if they don't do anything, um, it just bothers me that that Randy Orton um, just seems to get. I mean, he's he, I know he's popular. I know he's, you know, the upper echelon, and he's still young. I think he's like 32 or what have you. But to me, it's just um, when you have a guy like that, and he's supposedly just basically untouchable, but basically, um, well, just takes away morale from the locker room, saying, "Well, hey, I bust my butt, I do everything right, and you know, when I barely get on the show, but this guy." Who failed the drug test, sit down 60 days, bad mouth of the but our fans, what have you, um, very vulnerably, you know, what have you, and <laughs> he's still gonna get pushed. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised that he's gonna get a world title push. 
um, coming anytime soon. It just bothers me. And another thing that really was bothering me is um, <laughs> the way they, this whole CM Punk character. I know, CM Punk is good as a heel, but it just to me is the round peg in the square hole. That WWE is trying really hard. And the fans, honestly, in Boston was not, I mean, to me, they tried to make it pro either, but it was still like half, like 45, 50% punk. And, he was wearing Yankee colors. Same part. Um, same part wearing Yankee colors. It was just, it was John Cena's hometown where um, the Rise Above Cancer show, which looks pretty nice. Uh, and he still can't get that cheer. It's downright disturbing. And then that that Cena all this time, Cena cannot get cheers. I mean, I don't know what the WWE needs to do. I'm not saying it's a term heel. I mean, I don't know. And it's not like he sucks or whatever. I mean, he did a pretty good um, overhead of German uh, second rope German suplex. And it was a pretty good dusty finish. But it's just overall wondering. It's just this whole heel turn of CM Punk is try trying so hard. But in the end, it's just going to, again, people are going to rebel. Like, you know, they're not going to cheer Cena. They're just going to like, and, and to me, this is the problem. Is that why is Cena doing this? I mean, he's already conquered that mountain. To me, you know what would have been actually interesting? Instead of Cena, it should be someone like, say, Alex Riley or, you know, that sort of thing. Man, I mean, and besides, they say they've been powering around with that. You say, come on, man, you've been, you've been changing with that. Just have like little background stuff like that. You already beat Ziggler. I mean, why not continue that? The Knight of Champions or what have you, he has. Um, and look, I mean, he comes really close. And, you know, they have CM Punk, like, supposedly, when like, he's going to shake his hand, and then he just does a bam, real kick in the head, what have you. Bam, CM Punk turns full heel. Uh, Alex Riley gets close, but yeah, he could get a really good face for him. You know, he already faced, but he can't really be like, pop, like, oh my goodness, that's Alex Riley. And Alex Riley came this close to the WWE Championship. But CM Punk is a bad guy now, what have you. It would have been a lot, you know, wouldn't be as forced. I mean, it'd still be forced, but, you know, maybe it would have been a lot better because he would have a new competitor, a new guy fighting, a new, you know, someone who's a different type of uh, standing. You know, that's that's the problem with WWE. It's just everything is predictable. And another thing that really bothered me, and it um, happened with the WWE uh, uh, it was last week on Raw, and I looked up to see the promo again after, you know, the crazy for too long because I couldn't really concentrate. Uh, which, is, like I said, white noise, what have you, but I rewatched it. There was some really good stuff there, but the one thing it says that uh, Cena came across is like, oh, you won the championship by any means necessary. I'm like, really? He beat that real clean. He won the uh, TLC. Clean, he beat Ziggler clean after Ziggler won three in a row via was disqualification or a count out. Um, but those victories, he won the elimination chamber clean, he won beat Chris Jericho clean by submission at WrestleMania, he beat Chris Jericho again clean at Extreme Rules, he beat CM, um, he beat Daniel Bryan in the middle of the weight ring clean. For that nice so supposedly submission finish, what have you. He beat Daniel Bryan and Kane clean in Money in the Bank. He beat <laughs> Cena and Big Show clean in Triple Threat Matches at SummerSlam. It just the dude has won clean. It's just like, okay, he won by enemies to say, but since, I mean, it doesn't make any sense. And, and, he, and, you know, it's the funny thing is that CM Punk had, is completely right. He's not been booked correctly. He has not been in the main event. He's just been on the, the show. He just doesn't really exist. He's this background character. It just shows that John Cena is a book for championship, which is a problem because if you believe, if, if that's what the WWE wants, it just seems like, then why have CM Punk as your champion? 
I know, I know. So you should have your stars and what have you. But to me, the championship is the main prize. If you're to hold the title, you're the man. No question about it. And you know what? I'll have a little assist. You know, I have CM Punk. You know, The, the Rock and, and the Cena, yeah. All right. Lesnar, Cena, yes. Uh, Lauren Anders, Cena, no. Big Show, C Big Show. Cena, no. The Money in the Bank match, no. Uh, you know, Lesnar, Triple H, sorry, no, I don't really care for it. Uh, I just feel like, honestly, and I know, and I know that some people would probably um, disagree, and I don't really care, but honestly, I don't see why Cena should be still in the main event um, right now. He should not be. Personally, he's done everything. I know what people probably agree with me at this, but uh, Cena has done everything he's ever going to accomplish. There's nothing for him to do. I mean, nothing. He has completed every task, he has climbed every mountain. Seriously, what is there for him to do? And have him a championship for a long time? It's just, well, I don't know. It's, it's just, I mean, he lost to the Rock at WrestleMania. Okay. And that, you know, honestly, I don't really care. I really just don't care. And the WWE has to realize that much as they love Cena, I love how much as Vince loves him, and he's a hard worker, or what have you, but they have to let him go. And eventually, I think they're going to have to realize that. And, and honestly, until they don't, you just keep booking someone who's above the WWE. Like, we always want to say that the whole little saying, like last year, no one can be bigger than the WWE. Well, at this point, the way they're booking right now is John Cena is. Bigger than the WWE in the, in the title sense. The WWE will have, I mean, to me, the WWE title is so representing their company. And if the way you're booking him like this is, to me, is in the detriment to your company. company. I mean, if you believe, that's just, yeah, and it just gets, shows up the fact that, yeah, that's the John Cena Championship instead of the well, WWE title. Anyway, that's my little rant here. Anyway, that's all I gotta say. Peace and love. I'll see you when I see y'all. Later.